We have our Neo4j database up and running. Let's take a look at how to get some data into the database. Uh, so first, by clicking on these three bubbles, we can just make a note of what version of Neo4j we're using, uh, and so on. But the important thing here I just wanted to show is we can look and see which database we're using, or which directory the database is in, more specifically. So this is for our intro example uh, on flight data. If I click again on the three bubbles, it'll collapse that back down. This is the uh, web interface for Neo4j, the web admin interface, the new one. Uh, you'll see at the very top here, this is the command line for our web admin interface. Uh, results and warnings and uh, so on will be showed down, uh, shown down below. So uh, we have no data in the database. If we want to see what's in our database, what we can do is issue a select query of sorts. Uh, in Neo4j, we'll call it a match query. And I'm going to say match n, and n is just a placeholder. I'm saying match anything because I haven't specified any constraints, and then I'll say return n. So it's going to match everything in the database and return it. Uh, unfortunately, if I run that right now, we haven't put any data in the database. So we'll see that it says returned zero rows in 16 milliseconds. There are no items to return in this database. So let's put some stuff in there. Uh, remember, we're going to have flights, we're going to have airports, and then we're going to have relationships that match each flight to its arrival and, uh, and departure airports. So I will create just one flight here by hand, and I'm going to do flight number 23 in our data set. And so here's the syntax. I'm going to use the create command, and then I'm going to give it a name, this object I'm creating. I'll call it N1. I can call that pretty much anything I want, but uh, typically I'll keep it simple. Uh, and then I'm going to tell it what type of a node I'm creating. And so this is a, uh, a flight node. I'll also have uh, nodes that I create that will be called airports. Uh, th and then what I'll do inside braces here, you'll see I've got opening and closing braces. I'm going to give it all of the key value pairs. Those are the attributes for this node. So you can give it any number of key value pairs. And in this case, the three key value pairs I'm going to give are the flight number, which will be a numeric variable, the airline, which is a character variable, and so I've put it inside single quotes, and the capacity of the flight, which is another numeric variable. So those are three properties that will be assigned to this node. So when I run this, we'll see that it says uh, added one label, created one node, set three properties, return zero rows. Now, why does it say return zero rows? If you look at the query that I issued, it didn't actually ask it to return anything. So I could have said return n1 at the end of that. Uh, and I'll show how to do that here as we create an airport. Uh, you don't need to return it. It did indeed create it. It just doesn't display it when it's finished. Uh, if you want to display it as it's created, I'll show you here how to do that as, with an airport. So next, let's create one of the two airports. Uh, so this flight goes um, from Atlanta to Detroit. So I'll create those two airports. So here's the query to create the Detroit airport. So create, and I'm calling this A2. Uh, there's nothing special about A2. It was the second airport in the list of data that I have. Uh, so I'm just calling it A2. Uh, now, one of the labels for this node is airport. I say one of the labels because you can actually have multiple labels on a node. Uh, so this is uh, the label for this airport. Now, don't confuse that with label that we have here. The label inside the braces is just representing that that's the accepted FAA label for the Detroit airport, is DTW. So I'm using label here uh, in a different sense. It's one of my key value pairs. Uh, so the label for the airport is DTW. The city is Detroit, the state is Michigan. Now, if I want it to show the result after it creates it, what I'll say is return A2. And if I run this query, you'll see that it says at the bottom here, uh, displaying one node, zero relationships, and there it is. Here's the Detroit airport. It's been created. And if I click on it, we can see that it's got label DTW, city, Detroit, state, Michigan. Uh, and by default, it's using the label as the uh, text to describe the item. Uh, I could change that, though, if I click on Style. I can say Caption, and I could say, give me the city instead. It'll say Detroit, uh, or I could say State. Uh, I like Label. I think that's the easiest, uh, so I'll leave it at Label. 
Uh, so if you want to return the result when you're done, that's the way to do it. Uh, you don't have to do that every time. Uh, in fact, when you're doing a lot of these at once, you might prefer just to run the queries. So I'll create the Atlanta airport as well. Uh, I won't return that one, and you'll see it says added a label, created a node, set three properties, and returned zero rows. Uh, so it has now created uh, the Atlanta airport. Let's just take a look at everything that's in the database now. Match n, return n. When I do that, you can see we've got three nodes. We've got Flight 23's node, and it's of type flight. And we've got the Atlanta airport and the Detroit airport. And so now the only thing left to do is set up the two relationships that indicate arrival and departure airports. So let's do the departure airport first. And here's the syntax for that. To create a new relationship, first I need to match my two nodes. Uh, so I need to say this is going to match uh, flight number 23. So A1 is going to be a node of type flight where it's got a property of number 23 and then node B1 is going to be the airport that I want to match so it's got a type of airport with a label of ATL uh, so it finds the airports uh, the airport for the departure airport is, is ATL the flight number is 23 and it's going to create a relationship from A1 to B1 and the type of relationship it's going to create, I'm going to call it R1, and then I'll say colon and departs. So the relationship type will be departs. And I could assign properties to this relationship if I wanted to, but I don't need to do that at this point. And if I run this query, we'll see that it created one relationship, and I didn't ask it to return anything. So now, again, I, this command line, I can use the up arrow to go back commands that I've issued. It's a little bit quirky, but for now it works for what I need. Uh, and again, if I display all of the nodes and relationships, now we see there is indeed a relationship from Flight 23 to Atlanta. And if I click on that, you'll see it's a departs relationship. And in fact, if I drag things around a little bit so that there's more space, you can even read the label departs there if you look closely. Um, Okay, so we have our departure flight. Now all I need to do is assign the arrival for that flight. Uh, so let me bring the text in for that one. So again, I'm going to match flight number 23, but this time I'm going to match it to the airport Detroit. And I'm going to create a relationship with the label arrives rather than the label departs. And so when I run this query, Uh, oh, because I pasted it in, I think, with, a, with an extra blank line, it gave me this one, two, three. So all I need to do is click Run, or Execute, uh, and now you'll see it created one relationship. And again, this is where that up arrow thing gets quirky. If you had a multi-line thing here, it doesn't let you go up arrow past that. So what I'll do instead is just type out match n, return n, and get our full set again. And now we'll, we can see if we look closely... I'll spread these out. We can see we have an arrives relationship as well. And so flight 23 departs Atlanta and arrives in Detroit. And so we can do this now for any number of flights. So we could have multiple flights connecting these airports now. Uh, remember if we had just used the flight number as our relationship from one airport to another, we would be limited to just one flight between airports. Uh, so this allows us to have as many as we want. Now, uh, this is not the best way to insert large volumes of data, right? We have even this small data set has 24 flights, and I just had to issue five queries to create this flight. Two to create the airports, which I don't have to do again for future flights if they use the same airports, but I had to create the flight, and then I had to issue the departure query and the arrival query. So three queries for each flight. That would be 72 queries that I would have to do by hand, uh, plus we have four different airports. So I would have to use 76 queries to enter this data set by hand. You might guess that's not a fun thing to do. So in the next couple of videos, we'll take a look at how to do those as a batch insert rather than have to do each one individually. And we'll look at two different ways. One last thing before we go here uh, is we probably don't want to leave these observations in the database if we're going to insert the entire thing by hand. We could make sure we don't reinsert them if we wanted to, 
uh, or we can use some more complicated syntax for our queries. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the data in the database so that we can start fresh. And here's the syntax for that. Use this with care. If you're working with a large database, this will remove everything from the database. So what I'm going to say is match A. So that's all nodes because I haven't specified any constraint. Uh, and then I'm going to say optional match a relationship from A uh, with this R. And so A and R are arbitrary node and relationships, respectively. Uh, and so it's going to say find all nodes, and for any node, find all relationships coming out of it. And then I'll say delete A and R. So that'll delete all nodes and all of their relationships coming out of it. So when I run this, what we'll find now is if I rerun match n return n, again we have zero rows. And so I've deleted the entire database. It still exists, it just has no information in it. Uh, so let's take a look next in some other videos at how to do batch inserts.